very special and significant event in um, Sydney Film Festival's history, Australia's history, where we're, we had the privilege tonight to watch a film that um, um, is very, very special to this country's history. Um, I should introduce myself, shouldn't I? My name's Erica Glynn, and I'm the head of the Indigenous Department at Screen Australia. Um, and for those of you who don't know about Screen Australia's Indigenous Department, um, we're a bunch of women, basically, who have, <laughs> who have um, in some way, shape or form, had a finger in the pie of a lot of the black stuff that's coming out on screen um, in Australia at the moment. And if you're not aware of any of that, let me mention a few little titles to you. Um, Redfern Now, Samson and Delilah, The Sapphires. Yeah. Yeah? No? <laughs> um, the really unfortunate thing is that we actually had nothing to do with this film. <laughs> and it's because we like to think of ourselves as um, a bunch of people who have been involved in very important and significant historical screen events in the country and we had nothing to do with this film. <laughs> by, by, <laughs> by way of making some kind of loose connection to it, I can only talk from a very personal experience, and that is being a 16-year-old girl in Alice Springs where bugger all happened except the town pool making babies and going to the pictures. And for me, going to a cinema and um, seeing blackfellas on screen was a very rare event. Not that I could analyse it that way at the time. I was, you know, quite young. Um, but what I did see on screen was, you know, one of those ones where there's a black woman being held over a cliff by a really tribal Aboriginal man, and it, it was okay, it was fine, but it wasn't me. Um, there was another one where there was this mad black fella running around killing white fellas everywhere. You know that one? That's good. But it wasn't me. Um, there was another one where there's this, yeah, oh, anyway, look, not, 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 not to put shit on it. <laughs> um, Nick Mimmett cut to 1981, and then this film come along, and there were a bunch of black fellas, really good looking black men, big mob of them, so young black 16, Alice Springs, they're from the city, they're from Adelaide. You know, the light bulb goes on. <laughs> and I can't pretend for an iota of a moment that I was having any ideas about the significance of this film changing the world for contemporary Aboriginal Australia or anything like that. That came much later. At the time, it, the light bulb went on in terms of, that's me, there's this great armies, there's this really great stuff being talked about that belongs to me. And that's a special event. And it's a great, great thing that Australia, the National Film and Sound Archive, have seen fit to agree with me <laughs> and a whole bunch of other people. Um, um, I suppose on that note, it's, it's a good time to bring forward um, Meg Lamberon from the National Film and Sound Archive, who has been responsible for helping bring this film together for tonight. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I, I will be very brief, but yes, my name's Meg Labram. I'm Senior Curator at the National Film and Sound Archive, and I've been one of the people involved in really working for so many years now about bringing Wrong Side of the Road back to life in the physical sense. What I have to say is paying respect to the traditional owners of the land and also to all of the people from the film who've been able to be brought back together here. For the National Film and Sound Archive, it's an enormous thrill to see, one, the magic of film coming back to life, and uh, 
Um, I, I think, you know, the dream, which is that films like Wrong Side of the Road will continue to be seen and understood and welcomed by generations um, into the future, as well as those, as those people here who perhaps were part of it in, in 1981. And I can certainly remember being one of the, um, you know, the, the, the white audience watching it at that stage and beginning to understand the changes that hopefully were beginning uh, to, to appear in Australian society. What you're going to see tonight is the fully restored film, which is, from our point of view, uh, part of the magic, where the faded, scratched, beat-up original film has been worked on frame by frame. We were trying to work out how many frames that actually uh, actually is. If it's a film that's about 80 minutes long and it's 24 frames per second, think about the technicians who've gone frame by frame to clean up the dust, to fix up the scratches, to rebalance, to, uh, to bring light back where there had become darkness. What you're going to see and to hear is the film, as we were saying a little bit earlier on, um, perhaps is even better than it first appeared. But I think that's really for the, uh, the crew and the cast to make their call a bit further down the trail. What I have to say, just to finish, on behalf of the National Film and Sound Archive is that this is an example of what we're trying to do more and more, that is to keep what's in the National um, Audiovisual Collection alive and back out with um, you, the audience. And as Erica was just saying, those other films you were referring to, we've got them as well. So you can, <laughs> you can still see, yes, the woman being thrown off the cliff and the madman chasing white people through the bush, um, if you wish. And all of it fits into the way that Australia, I suppose, has dealt with the relationships between um, all of the, the cultures that are here. <coughs> what you have in Wrong Side of the Road is, I think, one of the most important films in that it is illustrating the way things were and perhaps most importantly the way that they are still in many circumstances. It is beautifully presented to Ned Lander and to Graham Isaac, the producer and the director. Congratulations on having the the creativity to actually make it happen to everybody who was involved in it. I hope it's going to be wonderful for you to see it looking so beautiful tonight. And for the National Film and Sound Archive, I think the fact that we can celebrate with you what Australian film is all about is the biggest celebration of all. So my thanks to you all to be here tonight, and I'm now going to pass back to Erica for a couple more words, I think, from the real stars, the people who made the film. Thank you.